on this edition of Somerville Neighborhood News. Check out the Martin Luther King Day concert and meet the performers. Attend a meeting to learn about the city's new zoning ordinance. Find out about the concerns surrounding the Union Square Community Benefits Agreement. Visit a Somerville High School Health Careers class and hear from union members on why they're upset the new mega apartment building at Assembly Square will be built by non-union labor. All this and more on Somerville Neighborhood News. Hello and welcome to Somerville Neighborhood News. Today is January 27th. I'm Remy Prevost. How's the shoveling going out there? Somerville Neighborhood News is your bi-monthly newscast and online source for multimedia news. It's a community service production of SCAT TV created by the staff interns, and your neighbors. We bring you the news every two weeks on SCAT TV, Channel 3, and on our website, SomervilleNeighborhoodNews.org. We begin our newscast over at Assembly Square. A huge residential building is about to rise next to the T station. The developer, Frit, had been in discussion with union contractor, but recently decided to build non-union, saying union labor costs too much. Frit sent a letter to city officials and labor leaders announcing its decision last month. Local unions and workers launched a campaign. Jerry Gostier is a lifelong Somerville resident and a member of the Sheet Metal Workers Union. I've been living on Dartmouth Street for 15 years. Um, I have a wife and four kids to live in the community. It costs a lot of money to raise a family in Somerville. At least if you work union, you get paid good money and you can... Uh, survive here. The complex will be built on this parking lot, Block 6 at Assembly Square, near the Orange Line stop, a movie theater, restaurants and clothing stores. Rand Wilson, a union organizer, said the project could have been a great opportunity for local workers. We want to make sure that a project of this size and scale uh, that it really will benefit the community. And one of the ways to ensure that it does is to make sure that um, the work is done union and that the work uh, will allow local residents not only to live here, but to work here as well. The redevelopment of Assembly Square received over $80 million in public funding. But the new apartment building is not a public construction, and the builder doesn't have to use union labor or pay what is called prevailing wage. Even though Federal Realty is benefiting from having the orange line here and from all of the infrastructure that the city and the state has, has created here in Assembly Square, it's not a prevailing wage job. And, and so it's when the bidding occurs, it's not a level playing field between the the, the, the good contractor that provides health care and pension benefits and training opportunities and a contractor that's um, making uh, as much money as they can and ready to exploit labor by any means necessary. Fred was not available for an interview. In an email, the company spokesperson said, quote, At the moment, we have not been able to find an innovative way to bridge the construction cost gap, and the federal realty is not willing to pass the excess cost onto future renters. This is not a problem that is unique to Assembly Row and the Somerville residential construction. It is happening all over the greater Boston area. Downtown Boston rents command a higher rent, and the construction costs can be passed on to the renter. We are not willing to do that. Um, I think Fritz is making a big mistake. Um, you know, I'm down now shops, um, you know, spending money all the time, going to movies there. I've been to a bunch of the shops. You know, it'd be nice to, you know, for me to be able to work down there and make some money. And, you know, you, you actually, you know, wow, we do good work. So you really get what you pay for. You know, it would be nice if um, the mayor would help us out and, you know, try to get us down there working. The mayor was also not available for an interview, but did send a comment. The city has been and will continue to work to attract new construction jobs through community-driven development. And as conversations between the trades and the contractors arise with each new project, we will continue to facilitate those conversations. 
While the mayor's office appears not to be taking action, the board of aldermen passed a resolution on January 22nd, urging freight to hire union labor. It was something about $60 million in bonds we've been given to Assembly Square. Um, and I do think that, you know, we, we have a right to say we would like to see some local hire here. We'd like to see some union hire. So Our unanimously, it seems like we're uh, supporting this, at least from the aldermen that are in attendance tonight, um, that th this is a value that we're going to carry forward in other projects as uh, uh, we develop the rest of the city. The resolution is not enforceable, but it does express the collective support of the entire board. Will public pressure cause Fritz to reconsider? We will stay on the story. From Somerville Neighborhood News, I'm Yu Xiaoyuan. Next, we head over to the Armory. Last week, the City Planning Department hosted an information and feedback meeting on the proposed new zoning ordinance. Uh, well, I came to hear specifically about affordable housing and how the new zoning ordinance is going to change the affordable housing requirements in Somerville. The city held a meeting in order to receive public feedback. But then at the same time, we are bringing new people into this process. We are plugging our residents and stakeholders in who have never participated in civic affairs. And isn't that consistent with Somerville's identity? Isn't that how all of the great things happening in this community have been built? Participants divided into groups according to their interests, affordable housing and community benefits being one of them. Sometimes a developer will do something that they're not zoned for, yep. and then I hear like many, many stories of, well, they built it anyway, and then they went and said, I can't change it, I did it, and it's a hardship for me to, to change it. And I'm kind of wondering if there's if that sort of thing is, is dealt with in a, in a well, concrete fashion. Director of Planning George Proakis and other staff answered concerns, like the increase in new condos. And I don't think the zoning is going to have anything. I mean, and of course, the only thing they now do is luxury condos. Any condo that's built is now luxury. One of the most significant problems is a combination of a regional well, a national demand for more urban and more interesting places to live combined with a regional shortage of 400,000 housing units. Some of those who braved the cold said the meeting was helpful. I can read the zoning ordinance and kind of try to figure out best I can what it means, what are the implications, but to be able to actually talk to the people who developed the ordinance and be like, what does this part mean? You know, and they just can explain it in a way that's much more accessible. So that was really helpful. But it seemed like they really wanted the community to be engaged and to really participate and get their feedback on the zoning code and what it means to them or what their concerns were. Residents filled out forms to give more feedback. Alderman Niedergang and his colleagues on the Board of Aldermen have final say on the new ordinance. I'm looking for help, I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm not a planner by profession. This is complicated and it's very important and you know, the more people have looked at the issues and have suggestions, the better uh, job I can do when it comes time to vote. On February 10th, the Board of Aldermen will hold a joint public hearing on the proposal. Will the public's feedback be taken into consideration before the vote by the board? Stay tuned to find out. For Somerville Neighborhood News, I'm Laura Onyeneho. For more information about the new ordinance and what changes it might bring to the city, check out the website, Somerville MA gov forward slash zoning. Now we bring you the first in a series of video reports about classes and activities at the Somerville High School. These stories are from Miss Vera Ventura's video production class. This first one is about health careers. Health careers is a very unique vocational subject which allows the students of Somerville High to partake in similar situations experienced by health professionals when trying to prevent illnesses and save lives. The mannequins scattered about the class are very lifelike and are used to simulate real-life situations. Students who graduate from the program are CPR and OSHA certified. Health Careers is about learning how to save people's lives and what safety precautions you need to look for before you save somebody's life. To become a health careers personnel, you have to be required to learn how to do CPR, use the AED, which is Automatic External Defibrillator, First Aid, and OSHA certified. 
we plan to become nurses and the average income is about 40000 to 100000 a year. So having this CNA certification will help you get there sooner. Put it like that so she'll be able to reach it. Well, before we do any outside activities like taking blood pressure, checking pulse, respirations on actual people, we practice on this mannequin right here. I'd say it's pretty lifelike. It can breathe, it can make sounds, you could practice blood pressure and pulse and you could check the respiration. Okay, this is a simulated mannequin. It works with a SIM pad, which is very similar to an iPad. There needs to be a computer connection that goes directly to the SIM pad. And therefore, what we can do is we can use different scenarios where we can set up that the mannequin has difficulty breathing, that the mannequin may have an irregular pulse. We can set the parameters for all of the vital signs so that the students can check and see if they're accurate. I started working at Somerville High School in 1993. I was a school nurse. And I left from being a school nurse to coming to the Health Careers Program. One of the important things is that there are many job opportunities for students. And even if students do not go into the health career field, they learn life-saving skills like CPR, first aid, and they could use those in any part of their life. I love health careers because I get to experience what it feels like to save somebody's life. I enjoy working with people and I would just love to see people get better from where they started from. <laughs> I've been wanting to be in health careers ever since I've been interested in the health field. So being here is just a great experience. I'm already certified in so many things. I learned from experience and I've met great people on my journey to becoming a CNA. It's really fun. Here, we have normal blood pressure. That's good. All right. And next, let's hear what's in this week's edition of the Somerville Journal. <laughs> Hello, this week in the Somerville Journal, we'll have the latest on plans to bring Olympic cycling tracks out to Assembly Square. We'll have a look at the city's finances and follow up on efforts to get residents involved in the community benefits agreement at Union Square. You can always find us at wickedlocal.com slash Somerville, on Twitter at Ville Journal, and you can get in touch with me at 617-629-3385 or dAtkinson at wickedlocal.com. Now we head over to East Somerville Community School. Student and community members from across the city gathered to honor Martin Luther King's legacy and message of peace and equality. Reporter Justin Schreer attended and caught up with some of the participants. really important time for us to mark the work of the Reverend King. It is uh, time for us to mark what our community is doing every single day and it's an opportunity for us to celebrate. Martin Luther King is a great influence and I believe that I wouldn't have the great opportunity to be here with a bunch of my friends today if it wasn't for him and his legacy that he carries on till today. My entire family adores Martin Luther King because without him he wouldn't have inspired us to come to America because knowing America um, back then it wasn't really diverse. But since immigrants started to come along, it gave my um, parents the courage and the motivation to um, <clears throat> bring me and my siblings here for a better education. Come on home to New Orleans, I go like 
together and celebrate this day, but it, it's not as great as I'd like it to be because he can't be here with us today. We have to give a life to get a life is how I see it. And well, the outcome is great. We have a, Barack Obama's president now. He would be really happy about that. But we still face a lot of issues. So his dream and his values are still carry with me. They're going to carry with me as I go along in my life. Some of the most diversity in New England, I would have to say. Some of our high school has Asians, African Americans, whites, Hispanics, Caucasian, like it's it's a really diverse school and being able to communicate with all these different kinds of students, my best friends are white, my other best friends are Hispanic, so being able to communicate like that, it just embodies the vision and the goals that he had and he, we hear some of them, we do that very well. I believe it's our civic duty to promote peace and tranquility amongst all, because you see my friends, there's a prize at the end of this journey. I felt like it was a great opportunity to give my voice and share my story because I'm the kind of kid that is looking, always looking for that piece or that puzzle where I could jump in and, and just share a story with, with the community and with the world and I saw this as a great opportunity to put that out there. Like the song once said, keep your eyes on. The city is building a new website and needs your input. There's a survey online. Anyone who has ever had trouble finding something on the city's main websites, and there are a lot, needs to fill this out. That's somervillema.gov forward slash reboot forward slash survey. Fill it out before February 2nd. Up next, health tips from Dr. Ira Michelson, host of Taking Back Your Health, right here on SCAT TV Channel 3 on Thursdays at 7 p.m. and on our website. Hello, I'm Dr. Ira Michelson with the Health Minute. I wanted to talk to you today about a topic that's very important, namely exercise. There was a study that came out just recently looking at the relationship between health and exercise, and there have been a lot of studies on this. But what was very interesting was that this was a study of over 300,000 people, so a very large study done in Sweden, published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. And what they found out was that exercise, even modest exercise, had an incredible positive effect on our health. And what they found was that 20 minutes of walking per day resulted in anywhere between a, a 16 and 30 percent increase in longevity. Imagine that, that just a modest amount of exercise, something that most of us can do, results not only in feeling better and, uh, and going about our business better, but also living longer. So I want to encourage everybody to try to get whatever exercise they can. It doesn't have to be fancy or Olympian, but just something as simple as walking 20 minutes a day will be a very big benefit to your health. This is Dr. Ira Michelson for the Health Minute. Now, thanks to our friends at City Cable, here's a look at Mayor Joseph A. Curtitoni's State of the City Address, a speech he gave at City Hall on January 19th. The mayor talked about what he considers are the triumphs of the past year and the challenges of this year. We aim to tackle not just the issues that we face in Somerville, but the seemingly intractable questions that plague every city, affordability, education, climate change, mobility, public health, the social progress of all our people. 
If you want to read the entire address, pick up the January 21st edition of the Somerville Times or go to the City Hall's website, somervillema.gov, and find it under Alerts. We end tonight with another update from the redevelopment of Union Square. Reporter Iris Moore digs into one of the biggest issues, the Community Benefits Agreement. She started at a recent meeting. On January 14th, the mayor and members of the community joined the Union Square Civic Advisory Committee at Argenziano School to discuss Union Square redevelopment and affordable housing. This is the greatest crisis, I think, to our long-term viability, and we're going to need some bold moves. Among those present were members of Union United, a coalition of neighbors, nonprofits, labor groups, and other stakeholders led by the Somerville Community Corporation. Community members can say lots of things, and that's exciting. And how do you sift through, find what the priorities are, and how is the developer then uh, going to be held accountable to, to represent those priorities? Uh, and the community will also give input when the process matures enough that we lend to ourselves to community benefits agreements as well, but specifically to what we build. That'll be our plan. How much square footage, how much housing, how many jobs, the ratio between jobs and so forth we want to accomplish. A CBA is a community benefits agreement where a developer makes certain promises. Union Square master developer US2 has agreed to sign one. Increasingly used in cities across the country, CBAs are a way of making sure that communities derive certain benefits from large-scale developments. So, you know, back the Following the mayor's address, the yeah. Union Square Civic Advisory Committee yeah, began an open be discussion okay. about housing, housing and other issues. We'll Union United members way. present expressed uh, concerns about so, the decision-making process for months ahead, partly because the CAC's members were all hand-picked by City Hall. How can we ensure collaboration and transparency? One is I hope that someone from Union United will apply to be on the, this committee, for one thing. And, uh, Union United and others so, are especially you know, worried about the Community enough, Benefits uh, Agreement. Okay. According to the recently signed Master Development Agreement, Union Square's CBA will be negotiated between developer US2 and City Hall. But many are concerned that community members won't get a say in the agreement. Van Hardy is an SCC board member and an active member of Union United. We want the community to be at the table and we want to hold the developers accountable for the decisions that are made at the table. We've been hearing from members of the CAC and from the city is that they want to hold off on a CBA until the plans are already developed, which is closing the door after the horse has left the barn. But City Hall has a different idea about who will do the negotiating and when. We're involved in this planning process now, which uh, I think what you'll see sometime in March is you'll see some very preliminary plans and design concepts be put forward by US2. Uh, beginning in the summertime, you'll begin to see some concrete negotiations as to what should be in the benefits agreement. Uh, so I think we want to take dialogue and discussion and ideas from everyone, but at the end of the day, we will look to the CAC as the voice of the community to try to formulate their recommendations as to what the most important items are. But at the end of the day, again, it will be a formal agreement between the master developer and the city representing not, o not, not only just the folks in Union Square, but the city as a whole. Whatever benefits agreement we finally agree, we finally arrive at, has to benefit fit everyone in the city. But not all CBAs are negotiated with cities. Tufts University professor Penn Lowe has extensive background and experience in community benefits agreements. CBA stands for Community Benefits Agreement and I did a bit of looking into CBAs as a strategy for communities to gain some control over development. Um, I do a lot of work with community-based organizations in Boston and in Somerville uh, around you know, how residents can uh, really gain some benefits out of development and really to promote development without displacement. Gentrification has been a huge concern of a lot of uh, 
groups, um, given the high cost of housing and all the new development that continues in our area. So community benefits agreement basically is a legally enforceable agreement that's made between a set of community groups directly with the project developer. It's legally enforceable because if one of the parties does not comply with that agreement, the other one can take them into court. I, I should mention that a CBA requires that both parties make commitments. So in the case of a community benefits agreement between community and developer, obviously we highlight oftentimes only what the developer promises uh, to give the community, right? Whether that be um, promises around amounts of affordable housing that are built, um, perhaps contributions to open space and parks, um, mitigating environmental impacts, uh, even supporting small businesses, uh, providing good jobs. I mean, these are all the typical types of things we think of that the developer provides. But the community that agrees to this also is giving the developer something. And what they're giving the developer is a promise to support the project. When in the development process would be the best time to negotiate a CBA? Yeah, because a CBA does require the community to give something, which is support during the permitting processes, um, it's really important that CBAs are agreed to before uh, those approvals are made. Uh, because that's when the community actually has leverage uh, in terms of offering their support to the project. Um, and that's before the project has really been solidified in terms of what it's going to finally be. Who should be at the table when a CBA is negotiated? As with any contract, the devil's always in the details. And the first detail of a CBA to pay attention to is who are the actual parties that sign it. And the, the, I think the best outcome for community groups is that their coalition actually is the entity that signs the contract. Um, in that way, then, if the contract is not being fulfilled, there's an accountability chain that they can uh, directly use. There's been numerous examples now of what a lot of folks have called kind of watered down CBAs where elected officials have negotiated agreements or city agencies have negotiated agreements in ways that have not been inclusive and have not really represented uh, the full range of voices in the community. And you know, communities at the end of the day are, you know, in those cases have felt really left out and not had their, their interests really fully represented. If you have a public official or a, you know, a city agency make the agreement, then you have to, as a community uh, organization, go through yet another layer of accountability. So if the developer isn't uh, performing and fulfilling the promises under the CBA, then you don't have a direct means of trying to enforce that agreement. The Civic Advisory Committee has a few seats open. If you're interested in being considered, please go to the City Hall website and learn more. Then apply. The deadline's Thursday, February 5th. Go to somervillema.gov and check under Latest News. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back February 10th at 7 p.m. on Channel 3. In the meantime, you can watch and read our news stories at somervilleneighborhoodnews.org and check out our Facebook page, SCAT TV SNN. Share your favorite segments or send a tweet at SCATTV SNN. We welcome you to get involved with Somerville Neighborhood News. Become a reporter or just send in your ideas. Call us at 617-628-8826 or email us at news at scattvsomerville.org. I'm Remy Prevost and I'm a member of SCAT TV. You should join too and get involved in the news or other programs, classes and activities. Thank you for joining us and see you around the neighborhood. <laughs>